When we look at Berkshire Hathaway, we often see Warren Buffett alone. But Berkshire wouldn't be that successful if not for his partner, Charlie Munger, an extraordinary investor like Warren. In fact, in 1962 to 1975, Munger's partnership generated a compounded annual return of 19.8% versus the Dow Jones Index which only returned 5% annually during the same period. This is a testament to his skills, and Charlie was the one who influenced Warren Buffett to buy great companies that would prosper for a long time, instead of using the one-puff cigar butt strategy he learned from Benjamin Graham. So with this, Berkshire may not have grown to what it is now without Charlie's influence. So in today's video, we will learn from the great investor himself. These are the top 5 lessons I've learned from the Vice Chairman of Berkshire Hathaway, Charlie Munger. So let's start. First lesson, never stop learning. Remember that it's not real brilliance. In other words, you talk about prodigy what it takes to extend the boundary of physics, neither of us has it. We have learned how to outperform people that are smarter. We are good at lifelong learning. If you keep learning all the time, you have a huge advantage. Here, Charlie Munger explains, you can even beat those people who are smarter than you if you are consistent in learning every day. A lot of us think that in order to be successful, you have to be smart or a prodigy. No, a lot of successful people weren't the brightest at first. They weren't even the hardest worker. But what they have is consistency. Consistency in learning something new each day. Technically, even if you just put in a few minutes of study every day, that little knowledge you get from that few minutes would eventually add up. Munger also added, if you take Berkshire Hathaway, which is certainly one of the best regarded corporations in the world and may have the best long-term investment record in the entire history of civilization, the skill that got Berkshire through one decade would not have sufficed to get it through the next decade with the achievements made without Warren Buffett being a learning machine, continuous learning machine, the record would have been absolutely impossible. Same is true at lower walks of life. I constantly see people rise in life who are not the smartest, sometimes not even the most diligent, but they are learning machines. They go to bed every night a little wiser than they were when they got up. If you know Warren Buffett, he really reads a lot every day. News, financial reports, and books. Every day of his life, he doesn't let one pass without reading something. Imagine the knowledge he has accumulated throughout his life. But yes, some of us can't be like Warren. Just like what we've said earlier, even if you are too lazy to read, just make it a habit every day to scan a few pages of the book you want to read. This way you may be able to finish that book in a week's or a month's time. Yes, it took you a long time to do so, but it's still new knowledge every day. And eventually, as you make it a habit over time, you eventually do it longer. So never stop learning. There's always a way for it. Remember, make it a goal to go to bed every night a little wiser than when you got up. Second lesson, stay in your circle of competence. I want to think about things where I have an advantage over other people. I don't want to play a game where other people have an advantage over me. I don't play in a game where the other people are wise and I'm stupid. I look for a place where I'm wise and they are stupid. And believe me, it works better. That's my philosophy. You have to know the edge of your own competency. I often see a lot of people play in a game that they don't have any advantage of, pursuing things they aren't good at. Much is true about investing. You go to what you know. Invest in companies you love and know. Never invest in a company that you don't understand. Use the strategy that is most appropriate for you. If you are good at long-term investing, why would you push yourself into trading just because your friend is telling you that he or she made a ton of money there? Much is true in other things you do. Charlie Munger also explained, if you're 5'1", why would you be playing basketball where all other guys out there has an advantage over you? Yes, there is a chance for you to succeed in that, but you really have to be extravagant to be able to do so. So know your strengths, know where you're good at, and find something that you can do that complements those strengths of yours. Remember, play in a game where you have an advantage over other people. Lesson 3. Use compounding interest to your advantage. Understanding both the power of compound return and the difficulty of getting it is the heart and soul of understanding a lot of things. Well, when I was young, I read the savings bank thing, the richest man in Babylon, which taught the joys of understanding your income and investing the difference in how wonderfully it would work over time. And lo and behold, I did exactly what this little pamphlet suggested, and it worked. And so I got the idea that I had a mental compound interest thing too. 
and so I finally decided I was going to give the best hour of the day to improving my own mind and then the world could buy the rest of the time. Now Warren Buffett added to this, Charlie's always said that the big thing about it is we started building this little snowball on the top of a very long hill. So we started at a very early age in rolling that snowball down and of course the snowball the nature of compound interest is it behaves like a snowball of a sticky snow. And the trick is to have a very long hill, which means either starting very young or living very, very old. Compounding interest is the eighth wonder of the world. Such a simple thing, yet a lot don't use it. Most use it the other way around. They are the ones paying the price of compounding interest, compounding loans, compounding bad habits throughout their lives. If you have read The Richest Man in Babylon, it's stated there, that you should always abide by the rule to pay yourself first before paying everyone else, that the part of all you earn should be yours to keep, and let those savings earn you more money, make money work for you. Anyway, I have a summary of The Richest Man in Babylon. I really suggest you watch it. This book is one of the best finance books there is. So there's a link below. When you hear the story of Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett, they always tell you, oh, they are the billionaires, one of the richest in the world, the greatest investors in the world. But what they don't tell you is, they amass most of their fortune when they reach the age of 50. They just let their money grow and grow through compounding interest. Well, that wouldn't be a good headline now, isn't it? Because it's the boring way, it's a slow process, but it sure does work. Both Charlie and Warren understood the power of compounding interest over time, and they held on to that belief until now. Both of them not only use it to let their money grow, but also to improve their mentality. They compounded their knowledge every day, not letting a day go by without leveling up themselves. You can just imagine this if they are in an open world game. They would be those players who have max status because they have enhanced their skill to the utmost limit, leveling up daily. Lesson 4. Pursue your interests. In my whole life, I've never succeeded much in something I wasn't interested in. So I don't think you're gonna succeed if you're doing all day doesn't interest you. You've got to find something you're interested in because it's just too much to expect a human nature that you're gonna be very good at something you deeply dislike doing. You have to play a game where you've got some unusual talents. This is also connected to what Charlie said a while ago. Play in a game where you have an advantage of. Most likely, if you love what you're doing, you would put time into it. You would improve and improve your skill in it. Because have you ever tried doing things you don't love? It drains you, right? You feel that when every time you do it, you exhaust more energy doing it than activities that you love. Just like the famous quote, choose a job you love and you will never have to work a day in your life. Just imagine making money doing things you love. Now that's one good combination. Lastly, clone great ideas. Cloning is a very interesting idea. You do or move ideas from one place and bring them into another. If that's cloning, I do it all the time. Of course, it's useful if I were you people. Look at what other people you regard as great investors are doing for ideas. Just imagine, one of the goat of investing himself say he does it all the time. Because here's the thing, there's nothing wrong in cloning or copying other people's strategy, especially in the investing world. If it's a great idea, then use it, combine it with your own ideas that work. There's no shame in that. There are countless of books out there written by the legends themselves. And YouTube Academy is there for you. You just need to know where to look. But again, there's a catch here. Be careful on whom you clone. Of course, you're cloning anyway. Then you should choose the right people to clone. In investing, I choose whom I clone. I clone those who have a proven track record. Not those people who just advertise themselves as great investors, but only has months or a few years worth of data to prove it. So always check first whom you are copying. Today, with the advancement of technology, all the things you need to clone properly is already at your doorsteps. Now, I also made a video all about cloning great investors. I discussed there another great investor whom is also a shameless cloner, Monish Babrai. So if you want to watch it, there's a link below. Now, if you notice, most of the lessons here aren't targeting investing directly. Because investing isn't all about knowing those complicated formulas and reading financial numbers. But you can already be a successful investor if you have the right mindset for it. A lot of investors skip this part, but these are the things that the legends keep on repeating to us. Yet we ignore it. We skip the most important part, developing the proper mindset. Because this is not only for investing, but for your daily life as well. Having the proper mindset gives you an edge towards your competitors. Charlie and Warren has proven that throughout their life in their investing career. Abiding by the simplest principles can make you successful. With that, this ends this video for today. So if you have gone far in this video and still haven't clicked the like button, I would really appreciate it if you do so before leaving.
And if you want to know more about investing, you can watch my other videos as well or clicking the subscribe button to be notified whenever I post a new video. So thank you and see you in the next video.